Hi, everyone. I'm Charlotte. I'm a React Native tech lead at BAM, but I'm not here to talk about React Native. I'm here to talk about React. We all know React. We all love React. But do we truly understand it? Have you ever found yourself in this situation where a component gets rendered, but you have no freaking idea why? React operates on a deterministic rendering algorithm. And at the end of this talk, you know exactly which component is going to get rendered, when, and why. Today, we're going to see how React operates under the hood. We'll explore how React manages data, how it decides which component should get rendered and which one shouldn't. We will build our own mental model of React rendering behavior. So let's dive in and decode the mysteries of React by beginning with this first question. Where is our component's data stored? We'll be using a simple counter example throughout this entire presentation that displays a counter value along with a button to increment it. When we first run our app, React creates this virtual tree made of our React components. This tree is called the fiber tree. The fiber tree holds all of the components that make up our app. And from this virtual tree, React is going to inject our HTML elements into the DOM to display our application on the screen. The fiber tree keeps in memory through time and reminders information about our components, their data, their props, and their states. This way, when a render happens, React knows which component may have changed and which one it should render. So the first time we run our code, React creates this fiber tree. Every time we instantiate a React component, it adds a node into the tree. And such a node is called a fiber. Let's take a look at one of them. Let's take a look at this value component. When we instantiate value, we're using this JSX syntax. And JSX is actually just syntactic sugar and is equivalent to the call of this JSX function or create element up to React 17. So when we call value this way with this JSX syntax, we actually call this JSX function. And this JSX function, when it is called, creates a new React element. A React element is an object that has the type and props of the component you're instantiating. And from this React element, counter returns this React element, two of them, value and button. You know that function components are functions that return React elements. You may have seen this in the typing. So counter returns this value React element, and from it, React will create the counter fiber, the, sorry, the value fiber, and inject this value into the fiber tree, along with all of the other fibers. A fiber is just an object as well that holds information about one component through renders. In this value fiber we create from the value React element, we have the type and props that were copied from the React element along with a bunch of other states and flags for React to keep track of. And finally, we have its position inside the fiber tree. Now that we know what a fiber is, let's go back to our counter example. Let's see what its fiber tree looks like. Also, to differentiate React elements from their fibers in my schemas, I'd be representing React elements this way with this gray overlay and this, this fragment to remind that React elements are created from this JSX syntax. So let's get back to our counter example and see what its fiber tree looks like. Let's see what happens at first render. The first component we instantiate with this JSX syntax is this counter component. So we create the counter React element. From it, React creates the counter fiber and injects it into the fiber tree along with all of the other components. It's the first node of our tree. Then we are going to render counter. What does this mean? Rendering a component means executing its function component. Counter really is just a function. So we execute it. We render counter. So first of all, we have this use state. Use state is going to be writing its default value inside the fiber to keep it in memory for the next render. Then we're going through this JSX. So we are going to create new React elements for value that takes this one count prop. We have count equal to one. And for button. Counter returns these two React elements. Then React takes them, and from them creates their fibers, so value and button. Then we, we are done with counter, so we move on to value. We execute value. 
we pass it the values of props that were stored inside the fiber, so count equal to one. We execute this function and we create the paragraph React element. And from it, React creates the paragraph fiber. And we're done. Here is our first fiber tray. Now, we haven't displayed anything on the screen yet. This tree is still virtual, so React is going to go through our fiber tree. And every time it encounters an HTML element, it is going to inject it into the DOM to display our application on the screen. So our paragraph and our button. And now our application is live on the screen. Before we move on and talk about renders, I wanted to come back to the notions of React element and Fiber to see what really is the difference between them. When we call counter with this JSX syntax, we create the counter React element that has the type and props of the component we're instantiating. From it, React creates the counter fiber that has the type and props that were copied from the React element, but also the position inside the fiber tree. Then, when we're rendering counter, React, when we call this use state, React is going to be writing this value inside the fiber. The fiber has more information than the React element. Then React takes this fiber and adds it into the fiber tree along with all of the other components. A React element is a fleeting value used to create this fiber, but we don't keep the React element in memory. We have a tree of fibers. We don't have a tree of React elements. A React element is a fleeting value. The fiber stays. And this fiber tree is kept in memory to calculate the next render. Let's see what happens at the render. What happens when we click this button? We trigger a set state. We are going to render. We will calculate a new version of our fiber tree that corresponds to the change that we've made, to our new render, our new state. Once it's done, we'll be able to compare this new tree to the one from the previous render and apply the differences to the DOM. But when we calculate this new fiber tree, we won't be rendering every single component of our app that would be inefficient, only the ones that may have changed. Let's see how this calculation, calculation process goes step by step. So we click this button, which triggers its state. At this point, several things happen. First, we duplicate our fiber tree. We are going to update this new tree to apply the change that we've made. But till now, this tree is just a copy of the previous one. Second thing, we are going to execute our set state. We calculate our new hood value, our new count hook value, and write this new value inside our new counter fiber. We also add this render flag to counter as it holds the state that was just changed. And finally, we are going to trigger a new tree traversal. We are going to go through our fiber tree and, and re-render our components, but not all of them, only the ones that may have changed. So we'll go through every fiber, we'll visit every, every, each of them, and for each of them, we are going to wonder, should we re-render this component? May this component have changed? If the answer is yes, we re-render. Otherwise, we bail out, we rage quit, we don't re-render, and we move on to the next fiber. And we begin at the top of our tree with counter. Should we re-render counter? There are two criteria for a component to get rendered. If a component matches either one of them, we render. Otherwise, we don't. The first criteria being being flagged for re-render. And counter was flagged for re-render. So fair enough, we re-render counter. Let's add up some color in this schema. Let's, let's put in blue the components that were rendered just to keep it in mind. We re-render counter. This means executing our function component. So we execute counter and we pass it the values of hooks and props that were stored in memory inside the fiber. So we execute the counter function. First of all, useState is going to be reading its value inside the fiber, this two hook value. Something you've got to understand here is that a function component is just a function. A function component does not retain data. useState does not retain data. The fiber does. When we call set state, Set state writes its value inside the fiber to keep it in memory for the next render. Then, at the next render, your state is going to be reading its value from the fiber. So we end up with count equal to two. Then, we're going through this JSX. So we create a new React element for value that takes this new two count prop object and for button. 
Contour returns these two new React elements, then React takes them and creates their fibers. React will remove the old value from the new tree, the old fiber, and create this new fiber from this new React element that takes the props object, the props value from this new React element. This new value fiber is a whole new object. So you keep in mind that this object is different from the one of the previous tree. Let's put in orange the, the mm, new elements. And button gets a new fiber as well. And thankfully, we're done with counter. So we can move on to the next fiber, value. Should we re-render value? Well, it was not flagged for re-render, but there is a second criteria for a component to be rendered, and it is based on the props value. We are going to compare, through strict equality, the value of props of the new fiber to the one of the previous render. We are going to compare these two objects, and if they're different, we re-render. Otherwise, we don't. But in our case, they're different, so we do re-render value. I know that this check looks a lot like Memo's check, but it's another one. It's for all components, and we'll be talking about Memo afterwards. So we render value. So we execute its function component, and we pass it this new two con props object. We create a new React element for this paragraph, and then a new fiber. We're done with value, so we move on to our paragraph, which is rendered as its props have changed. And our button is rendered for this same reason. And here is our new fiber tree. Now React will be able to compare this new tree to the one of the previous render and apply the differences to the DOM. OK, this was kind of mechanical. Let's take a step back from what we've seen here, and uh, there is one thing or two that I'd like to talk about. One important thing I wanted to share with you through these schemas is a misconception that I had about React. I used to think that the source of truth to know which component may have changed and which one should be rendered was the code. But it isn't. The fiber tree is. I used to think that when we rendered counter, the fact that we are calling value this way with this JSX syntax meant that we would be executing in right away, but that's not what's happening. What's happening is when we render counter, when we execute this line, this value line, we create a new React element for value, and then a new fiber with this new props object. Then we keep on traversing our tree, and when we visit value, React is saying, oh, its props have changed. We should render that, and only then do we render value, and we then do we execute this function. The source of truth is the fiber tree. One second thing is that you can see that all of these components are rendered in cascade just because counter got rendered. Okay, this was a deep, deep dive and quite procedural. I'd like to abstract away all of this mechanical deep dive into simpler rules rendering concepts you could take away and use in your daily life, because I know you won't be drawing fiber trace every time you're wondering whether a component is going to get rendered or not. So one rule we could get away from this that you probably have already heard is this one. When a component gets rendered, when counter gets rendered, for example, all of the components it instantiates with this JSX syntax are going to get rendered as well. So, sorry, so value and button. And when I say all of them, I mean all of them, even if they don't receive any prop that depend on the parent. See, if we now switch our value component for this simple title component that does not receive any prop, I often see people believing that when counter is rendered, title won't get rendered because it does not have any props, and thus its props haven't really changed. But that's not true. See, when we render counter, we create a new React element for title, that has this new empty props object. It's a new object, different from the one of the previous render. From this new title React element, React creates the new title fiber. And this new title fiber takes the new props object from the React element. So when we move on to title, we compare the props object, and actually they're different. I know, two empty objects. They seem very alike. But these are two different objects, different instances. They hold different references, if you may. And in JavaScript, through strict equality, empty object equals empty object is false. So this title component is not 
is rendered. So as we said, when a component is rendered, all of the components it instantiates with this JSX syntax are going to get rendered as well. Now that we've said this, I'd like to abstract away these two criteria into actual sentences. We could say that a component is going to get rendered for either one of two reasons. Either if it holds a state that was just changed, and this corresponds to this first criteria. When we call set state, we flag a component as needing the fiber as needing to render, and then it matches this criteria. We could also say that a component is going to get rendered if its parent got rendered, and this corresponds to this second criteria. When counter is rendered, we create a new fiber, a new React element, and then a new fiber for, for, our com for this title component with a new empty props object. So when we visit title, React is saying that its props are different, and it renders it. So a component is going to get rendered for either one of these two reasons, and there's actually a third one. A component is also going to get rendered if it uses a context value that was just changed. I actually talked about context in details at React Summit a few months ago, and if you're interested in knowing how context works underneath and triggers re-renders of consumers, you can check out this talk. I won't be talking about context today. And from now on, I will abstract away React elements when they're not useful and directly say that when we're using this JSX syntax, we create a new fiber and add it into the tree to simplify. So a component is going to get rendered for either one of these three reasons, unless, unless it was memoized. How does memo fit in our mental model? If we now memoize our title component, it should not get rendered when counter is, as its props haven't really changed. But when counter is rendered, we still create a new React element and then a new fiber for title with this new empty props object. So when we visit title, title still matches this criteria. It's still, uh, its props object are still different. But we're not talking about a regular function component here. We're talking about a memo component. Its type is different. So before we, re before we re render, we are going to add another check. We are going to compare the props through shallow equality this time, and not strict equality. And if they're equal, we don't render. Shallow equality is kind of like strict equality, but at another level. We don't compare the props object itself, but each prop individually through strict equality. And in our case, these two empty props objects are equal through shallow equality. So we don't render title. And that's how memo works. But there is actually another way to make sure that title won't get rendered when counter is. Do you know what it is? Let's talk about the children prop. Let's now twist our example to pass our title component to counter as children prop. What I'd like to show you is that this time, when counter is rendered, title is not going to get rendered because it was passed as children prop. Let's first build our fiber tree. We have the app fiber. Then we render app, we execute the app function. And how do we translate this into fibers? Is title going to be below app or below counter next to this button? Well, this children prop syntax is, again, just syntactic sugar and is equivalent to doing this. So when we execute app, we create the counter fiber that takes as children prop the title React element. And this title React element takes a new empty props object that I'll put in ping because we'll want to keep track of this one. So app returns this counter React element. React takes it, and from it, it creates the counter fiber that takes the props of the React element. So we end up with the counter fiber that takes as children prop the title right element. Then we are going to run our counter. We execute counter and we pass it the props value from the right element. So this children prop, um, which is equal to this title right element. We are going through this JSX and we create a new right element for button because of the JSX syntax. Button for, not for children. 
we're not using any JSX syntax here, so there is no reason to create a new React element. Children is just a variable, just a prop. So counter just returns this children variable. Counter just returns this title React element. Then React takes it, and from it, it creates the title fiber that takes the props value from the React element, so this pink empty object. And button gets its own React element and its own fiber because of the JSX syntax. That's our fiber tree. Slightly more complicated than the previous examples, but let's get back to our counter ex Let's click this button. Let's re-render counter, and you will see that title is not going to get rendered this time. So we click our button. We trigger a set state. What happens then? First, we duplicate our fiber tree. We flag our component that holds the state as needing to render, so counter, this counter fiber, gets this render flag. And we begin traversing our tree with app. And app, this time, is not rendered. You see, it was not flagged for render, and when we created this tree, we made a copy of the one from the previous render. So this app fiber is a copy of the one from the previous render. This two props, this new props object is a copy of the one of the previous render. So these two props object are equal this time. This time it's the same reference. And in JavaScript, in this case, these two props object are equal. So we don't re-render app. And we move on to the next fiber, counter, which is rendered as it was flagged. So we execute counter and we pass it as children prop, this same title React element. We're going through this JSX syntax and we're still not using JSX syntax for our children, so we still don't create a new React element. We're just reusing the one that, was, that comes from the previous render. So counter just returns the same title React element. It's still the same title React element, so React does not create a new fiber for title. But button gets a new fiber because of this JSX syntax. And we're done with counter. So when we move on to title, title does not get rendered because this time its props are still equal. So we don't render title. So you can see that when counter is rendered, title is not going to get rendered because it was passed as children prop, because we're not using the JSX syntax here. And it makes sense. You can see that title is defined in the outer scope of counter. It does not depend on counter, it's a parameter. So it makes sense that we don't need to render title when counter is rendered, it does not depend on counter. Now, does saying this mean that title is memoized? Well, no, that's not the case. Contrary to a memoized component, when app is rendered, title is still going to get rendered. You see, when app is rendered, we execute the app function. So we create new React elements for both counter and title. This new title React element gets this new empty props object that I'll put in blue to differentiate it from the one of the previous render. And when we move on to counter, Counter is rendered because its props have changed. So we re-render re counter, we execute it, its function component, and we pass it this new title React element as children prop. We are going through this JSX, and counter returns this new title React element. It's a new React element, so React creates this new title fiber that takes the props object, the blue props object from the React element. So when we move on to title, Title is rendered because this time its props have changed. So you can see that when app is rendered, title is still going to get rendered as well because we're using this JSX syntax. Also, I'm talking a lot about this children prop right now, but it isn't exclusive to it. Children is not a magic name. As we already said, this syntax is equivalent to doing this. So instead of passing a component as children prop, you could pass it as whatever freaking name you want prop. The rule really is, if you pass an element as prop, it won't get rendered just because its parent got rendered. I was showing all of this to my colleague Pierre the other day, and his reaction was quite distinctive. He asked this intriguing question. If I instantiate counter 
outside of app this way. Is counter going to be memoized? Yeah. Well, that's just a day in the life of your. But that's an interesting point, though. Could it be true? When app is rendered, is it true that counter won't get rendered because it was instantiated outside of app, of app because we're not using this JSX syntax? Well, actually, yes, it is. First of all, this syntax actually seems to be working, even though it seems kind of weird. At first render, we create the app fiber and then the counter React element. App does not create a new React element, it just returns the counter React element. And from it, React creates the counter fiber, and the rest is pretty much the same. Then, when app is rendered, we execute the app function and we don't create a new React element because we are not using this JSX syntax. App just returns the same title React element. It's still the same title React element, so we don't create a new fiber for counter. So when we visit counter, counter is not rendered because its props haven't changed. <laughs> Sorry, what's kind of, I have five minutes left, I had a sound. Um, OK, focus. So counter is uh, not rendered when app, when app is rendered because it was instantiated outside of app. Now, what does this mean? Should we be using this? Should we extract the instantiation of our components outside of their parents to get better performance? Or should I get my colleague fired for such a weird idea? Well, no, I don't think we should be using this. First of all, if you have a heavy component you don't want to get unnecessary renders from, memoize it. React actually has a tool for this. Then you respect React's philosophy. Also note that this trick only works for components with static props. If counter received a prop that was defined inside of app, you wouldn't be able to move its, its instantiation outside anyway, so it's not even that useful. And lastly, it seems to be working, but I haven't read the whole React code, and even though it seems to work, I may be wrong about this, and I may be missing a point. If there's anyone from React core team who knows this may be problematic, please let me know. I'd love to hear more about this, and to prove Pierre wrong. So yeah, that's what I told my colleague, but then he said, wait, I'm thinking about something else. If now, I get two of them, two counter React elements that point towards the same instance, the same React element. When I click on the button of the first counter, will both of the counters get incremented or only the first one? Right, okay, Pierre decided he was gonna screw my presentation. But actually that's not so obvious, is it? When we render app, App returns the same React element twice, two counter React elements that point towards the same instance, the same object. But from these two React elements, React is going to create two different fiber, two counter fibers that have their own states. These two counter fibers are independent. So if you click on the button of the first counter, only the first counter fiber state gets updated and only the first counter gets rendered. And this got Pierre convinced for good. So we can move on to the conclusion. Here is our takeaway. You can abstract away from all of this mechanical deep dive. We can say that a component is gonna get rendered for either one of three reasons. Either it uses a context that was just changed, or it holds a state that was just changed, or its parent got rendered, unless, unless it was memoized, unless it was passed as children prop, or unless your name is pure and you like messing up with JSX. Thank you so much for your attention. If this subject got you interested, here are some resources to go further and keep diving. Oh, and here is Pierre's Twitter account for his Unexpected yet significant contribution to this talk. This was my mental model of Rex rendering behavior. Take it with you and build amazing mobile apps. <laughs> <laughs>